Thanks, Val, and uh, welcome here to Madison Square Garden today. Um, it truly is a privilege for all of us here at the Garden to host Media Day here in the arena, as well as obviously host the tournament. I look at today as one of the best days of the year, as I'm sure a lot of you do too, because having Media Day here today means that college basketball is right around the corner, and there's nothing better than college basketball. Um, this is the Garden, this will be the Garden's 82nd season of college basketball. We've got a ton of great matchups on the slate, and the season culminates with, with a couple of great weeks in March, starting with the Big East Tournament and ending with the NCAA Eastern Regionals. Um, our relationship with the Big East uh, goes back 35 years, as everybody's mentioned. Um, there's nothing like it. It's one of the best weeks, if not the best week, on the entire Garden schedule. It's tremendous to work with Val and her entire staff, Stu, John, Ann, Sean, Cal, everybody. They're just great to work with. It's really fitting today that the, um, the media day is in the arena. This is where many, many great moments, some of the best moments in college basketball history have taken place. And of course, many of them, those moments have been at the Big East Tournament. Who could forget Jerry McNamara's heroics in 2006? Ray Allen against Allen Iverson in 1996, right over there is where Ray Allen hit the leaner to win the game. St. John's first championship in 1983. Pearl, Walter Berry blocking Pearl's shot in, um, in 1986. And let's for, take a moment to not ever forget Pearl Washington, who was just a great player in this conference. And of course, the six overtime game, four hours of intense basketball. That was one of the greatest games ever in college basketball history. We are extremely excited here at the Garden with our relationship with the Big East and to host the 35th anniversary tournament coming up in March. We will make sure to work extremely closely with Val and the entire staff to honor the rich history of the tournament as well as the conference and also to embrace the future. Um, we truly treasure our relationship with Val and everybody, um, and we really look forward to many, many more exciting tournaments and games throughout the year. Thanks again, everybody, for being here today. Um, we look forward to a great year of college basketball. Thanks. All right, so without further ado, let's call up the panel. It's a great panel. I think you'll very much enjoy this. And let's start with a man that really needs no introduction. He's called so many games here uh, from 1970 through 1981. Seton Hall head coach. Heard him on New Jersey Nets broadcast for years. Um, lead college basketball analyst on FS1 and Fox Sports. And uh, this past year uh, called his first Final Four uh, with the CBS Turner Network. I want to welcome Bill Raftery. Raft? Next up, I want to welcome in a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame, career record 873 and 380. Won three national titles, 1999, 2004, and 2011 which you can't beat Butler. Won seven Big East tournament titles at MSG, more than any other coach. Won the first Big East tourney crown in 19, won his first Big East tourney crown in 1990. 2011 was the year they won five games in five days behind Campbell Walker. I want to welcome in Jim Calhoun. Next up, he coached at Seton Hall from 1982 through 1994. Won the Big East Tournament in 1991 and 1993. Made it to the NCAA Championship game in 1989 versus Michigan. Longtime coach in the NBA, great broadcaster himself, P.J. Colissimo. And 
managing many great moments on this floor. The most decorated player in St. John's history. Twice he won the gold medal with Team USA. Now in his second season as St. John's head basketball coach, Hall of Famer Chris Mullen. Two, three, hello. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Jim Calhoun wasn't very happy when Joel brought up the six overtime game here. Uh, unfortunately, he was on the short end of it, but uh, thank you, fellas. Of course, uh, Chris played here, an MVP in 1983 in a Big East tournament, uh, replacing a legend today, by the way, in Lou Conaseca. Uh, what are some of your thoughts of those great days early in your career? Well, well, Bill, the first thing is, uh, growing up in New York here, this was always a sacred place. You know, it was a place you always went. I remember sitting way up top there and wanting to come down and touch this shiny floor. And then Coach Karnasek would always emphasize the fact, as Joel said, college basketball, was, this was the mecca of college basketball, and it went away for years. <clears throat> when the Big East came here in 83, it was always a privilege for us to play here. It was, the coach used to say it's like playing in Macy's window. Mm -hmm. So he always emphasized, you know, the preparation and being ready because when you come out here, you're going to be exposed, good or bad. Uh, so it's pretty amazing that 1983 was the first year, and I assume it went well because it never left. <laughs> and, and, and Jim Calhoun came and, and took over and did some amazing things. But watching that video, uh, being on the West Coast for so many years, watching college basketball, not really being in tune to it, just the amazing... Uh, great, great players and the history and the coaches. It's really, to me, the, the, the greatest basketball conference. And of course, St. John's and Georgetown always had a great love affair be, between the teams. Uh, <laughs> reflect a little on those days with Patrick and those great players from Georgetown. Oh, yes. Uh, here's John Thompson three right here. I break out in a sweat just looking at him because he looks just like his dad. <laughs> <laughs> you act like your mom. But uh, yeah, so, so many great moments. The other thing too with the Big East is, uh, you know, with Villanova, Georgetown, UConn, we all recruit the same players. Everyone comes to New York to get our players. So we, you know, we all fight over that. But, uh, you know, I came out of high school with Patrick and Michael Jordan the same year. We played uh, some all-star games together. So the rivalry is already built in in high school and it just escalates. Uh, and back in those days, um, it took me probably 20 years to accept the fact that Georgetown was just good. We used to think they were dirty, nasty, uh, but you know when you have Patrick Ewing and a great coach like, like John Thompson, great things happen. But they, they really set the standard of aggressive play uh, and they made you think about them and prepare because you knew when you play them it was going to be a vicious game. You know, PJ, Jim, and I have uh nine Big East championships amongst ourselves. <laughs> Unfortunately, these two have the rest of them, I guess. But, uh, you know, PJ, uh, you came in. Uh, I coached so poorly, I actually made you look good as a coach, as I recall. But, you know, you came in after the three games that were held throughout the country, I believe Providence, Syracuse, and Connecticut, and all of a sudden, here we are with the garden. What did that mean to you and the Seton Hall program? Well, again, echoing on uh, what Molly said, uh, being as close as Seton Hall is, and uh, even growing up in Pennsylvania, this was always the place you wanted to play, mm -hmm. Madison Square Garden. And Dave Gavitt, obviously how much he meant to this league, but he, he understood it, it was like Broadway. He, we were off Broadway for three years, and then he felt it was time and he brought it here, and they never looked back. And it always, it, to me, it transformed the league. The tournament was so important. And in the beginning, we were in the 8-9 game a couple times, and there was just this many people uh, here, the, here the first night. But it was still special to be here and to be part of it. And the legitimacy that I think it gave and continues to give to the conference. And last year's a perfect example. Um, Kevin's team uh, is able to beat Jay's team in the tournament. Jay goes on and win a national championship. Mm -hmm. And so many times, I always thought the week here, the three, four days, in Jim's case, the one remarkable time, 
five days, the best possible preparation you could have for the NCAA tournament was playing the games here in Madison Square Garden before you went into the tournament. Uh, Louis would have been here if we were at Mama Leone's, by the way. Uh, <laughs> how much Italian food served at the garden early in the morning. Uh, you won in 91 and 93. How about some thoughts about those championships? Well, we, we were due. One, one of the years was Syracuse. I forget which one, but we had lost about 20 some times in a row. Uh, to Syracuse, and it was the snowstorm. I mean, we walked down, we stayed on, it used to be called the Marriott East Side, I don't even know if it's the same hotel. We walked through the snow to get here. Uh, it was a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. we used to, it used to be the Sunday afternoon game uh, on CBS, and there, there weren't a lot of people here, but we, we won, and it was one of those days where everything we threw up went in, and everything Syracuse did, and they finally lost, and Mr. Warmth came over mm -hmm. after the game, of course, and. Uh, you know, and I disagree, by the way, Molly. I hate to, as much as I respect you as a player, they were dirty and nasty, Georgetown always were. Uh, Thank one you. One of the reasons they were so good. Uh, but no, it, it, was, it was a special. To, to win this tournament was so meaningful mm -hmm. to our program. And again, it took it to another level. But you, to me, you could never separate the Big East Conference and the Big East Tournament, Madison Square Garden. The two of them, it started then, and they've never looked back. And particularly with the the league, the way it's aligned now, uh, it, that marriage is still here, and it's what I think makes the Big E, one of the things that makes the Big E so special. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Warmth is Mr. Beheim, uh, if you haven't heard that before. PJ lost 20 straight games to Syracuse. Uh, they went out every night for dinner after that loss. PJ beat him, and uh, Coach Beheim wouldn't go out for dinner. It shows you the warmth and charm of that individual. Uh, you mentioned one of the great games, the, your run, Jim, that five-game run, uh, just incredible, leading to one of your NCAA championships. Well, having Kimball Walker in that run made a tad bit of difference. Like, we had a, 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 an out pitch. You know, every pitcher needs an out pitch. My Red Sox didn't have it, by the way, in the last few days. Regardless, everybody needs an out pitch, and our out pitch was, you know, Want to pick and roll for Kimber, hope they switch. If not, we'll do some special things. And he was really special that year. New York City kid, comes back here, the place he always dreamed about playing. He still averages, I think, eight more points a game in the NBA when he's here. Mm -hmm. It's a special place for him. And Ben Gordon, for example, did the same thing. Ben Garden, they used to call him. That's with an R for some of you who don't know that. <laughs> Garden. Uh, but this was a special place. UConn, in some ways, Big East-wise, in 1988, beats Ohio State here. Mm -hmm. After that, we don't look back. <laughs> you know, by 90, we're here. We were fortunate enough to beat Syracuse and Georgetown within 24 hours, a great time for us. And clearly, and very definitively, the neighborhood battles you had here, and Chris said it so well, our kids kn knew every guy practically they were playing against. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a, a vested interest in, in, in my own personal way, and the guys were then seniors and juniors and been through a lot of this stuff for three and four years. Big East is somewhat still like that, national basketball is not. But that created these rivalries that were unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, 96, I know you taught that off-balance shot uh, for Ray Allen. Uh, reflect back on that particular championship. Well, actually it was a, a, a decoy play, and my genius, I wanted to run a decoy play, and we ran the decoy play with, with Ray was gonna dribble screen and other kids gonna come off the screen. Of course, he was wide open, and then he turned his head because I'm not sure he wanted the ball right there at that time with three seconds to go. Mm -hmm. And then Ray, now Big John always says, Big John Thompson always said he hit the floor before he put the shot up. I said, I don't know what he hit, but they called it good. <laughs> and therefore he's good, and people don't realize down the other end, Jerome Williams almost makes a layup. And we, in that great game, Iverson, Allen versus Allen, tremendous game, tremendous things. And you know, I, I think for all of us, when I look back and see Dave Lado, who's part of those squads, see, uh, uh, young assistant coach at the time, uh, Jay, and then Jay coming to the league. Mm -hmm. For all of us, and I say this now as a, a guy who is not doing Big East basketball, and I think Chris said it best, there's nothing like it. For those X number of years, and still now, as you said, flourishing now, this marriage between Madison Square Garden and playing the, the mecca mm -hmm. of basketball, in my opinion, is very special. I always remember the coaches, and this is one antidote, felt pressure when they had 16 teams, four wouldn't make it because they couldn't come here. That's how special this tournament is. Mm -hmm. And you should really try to appreciate that because it really was special. You know, as coaches and a player, uh, Chris, I'll start with you. Uh, 
in terms of being recruited, when Louis talked about Madison Square Garden, I mean, was, was that something that captured your imagination that this is a place I could really show people how well I can perform? It, it really was. It, it was something that set my, my decision apart, it was being mm -hmm. able to play here, playing for my family and friends. And you know, Coach has a long list of friends. Mm -hmm. So I remember coming actually to the NIT. So that was, that was like early April. I still hadn't decided on where I was going. And um, Frank McGuire at the time was working for the garden. And um, he took me for a little walk in the back, you know, mm -hmm. showed me around the, the locker rooms and stuff. And he said, Chrissy, you need to stay with Louie. <laughs> and I felt, OK, yeah. I'm in. He had the How pinky ring on, so I, I felt obligated. How about you as coaches, Jim? Start with you. Yeah, I think for Connecticut, it was so nearby and it was so far away in some ways for us. But to get to this place at that time was really special. I, you know, we had, I think, 16, 17,000 people here for the NIT finals. And I, I go back to that because it was showing that we could compete on a national stage. Mm -hmm. Ohio State was a very good team. We beat them. And I, and I think, though, doing it here makes a difference. And I, I truly believe that. I think that the, some of the kids, young kids, particularly in the Big East, don't understand the exposure you get just by being where you are. Mm -hmm. Being in the Big East is a very special place, and playing here, in my opinion, does nothing better. Your piece? Well, just to the, to the young guys, and uh, I joke about it, but obviously you guys weren't, we talked 35 years, you weren't even here, but hopefully you heard. Um, Molly is a player, unfortunately, when I first came in, <laughs> one of the reasons Billy got out and, and one of the reasons that we <laughs> won very few games the first couple of years was this guy. And it's funny, as he was walking across the court today, I guarantee if, if there's a basketball and you put it in his hand, he shoots a lefty jumper, I tell you exactly where it's going. It's going down. But uh, what made the league special were you guys, the players. We had the best players in the country right here, and they love to perform on the biggest stage. And it was a privilege. And I know so many of these coaches are good friends. Um, they're, they're very young. but. They, they do remember uh, being able to coach uh, against Jim and, and, you know, against Billy before I came to Seton Hall and Louie and the coaches there. Uh, it, it was prime time. It was what it was all about. And you guys are a big part of that legacy. And, and I hope that you'll cherish and I hope it means as much to you uh, to play on this floor because of what guys like him did uh, many years ago. You know, the history of this league has been about great players like Chris and others. And of course, great coaches. And I know the young people that get a chance to perform here feel the same way as you do. Uh, it's been a great marriage, thanks to the Garden for their contribution, certainly, and the exposure now on Fox Sports, I might add. <laughs> Mr. Calhoun's now with ESPN, so we very seldom talk to him. But uh, it's wonderful for us to be part of it in, in, from the TV end and watch you great guys perform. And you coaches put it all, all out there each and every night. So. We're looking forward to one of the great years, special years, and I think this year we're going to have more people in the NCAA. I think we've got maybe the most competitive league in the last couple in terms of what you might call the lesser lights or the middle of the road. So work hard. It's fun for us to walk in and watch you guys perform. Have a great year, everybody.